Moon Beam. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Do you want to be interviewed? Dark is a fair way to describe the Pacific Northwest. Under a nearly constant cover of clouds, and forests so dense they can block the sky, dark is our normal. There's also a plethora of dark tales to be found here as well. Welcome to Weird Washington with Unusually Horrid. Today's episode takes us to the south end of the Puget Sound, to a small portside town called Alala. This tiny town, shrouded in trees, hides a few mysteries of its own. One of them being why a town with a population of just over 4,000 people has need for three cemeteries. But the other secret this town hides is quite a bit darker. And that secret is the story of Linda Hazard and her so-called sanitarium. Our story starts, however, not in the Pacific Northwest, but in Carver, Minnesota, on December 18, 1867. Linda Laura Burfield was welcomed into the world by parents Montgomery and Susan Burfield. In 1885, at age 18, she would marry her first husband and have two daughters of her own. However, 13 years later, she decided to leave her family to pursue her career goals, a choice that unfortunately would lead to the death of dozens. Linda moved to Minneapolis to pursue her career in the medical field, and in 1902, that's where she was rumored to have killed her first victim. Cause of death? Starvation. Linda's bad reputation was only beginning. She would soon marry Samuel Hazard, a known swindler who had been kicked out of the military for misappropriating army funds. Unfortunately for Linda, their happy marriage would be ruined by the fact that he was already married, which led to a very public trial for bigamy, landing Samuel in prison for two years. After Samuel's prison sentence was up in 1906, he and Linda headed to Washington for a fresh start, where she would open up a sanitarium. She would call this sanitarium Wilderness Heights, but it would forever become famous by a different name, a name the locals had coined for it, a name that would represent everything dark that would happen here, and they called it Starvation Heights. Well, Linda Hazard was a fasting specialist. She claimed she could cure people that had diseases by fasting. She would fast them to death, basically. She would give them very little food, um, and it was rumored that she would do the autopsies in her bathtub, which is really gross. Um, and it's also rumored that that bathtub is in the new house next to the old Starvation Heights house. She apparently would take their teeth, because they were wealthy and they had gold teeth, and she would sell them off and take their jewelry, rings, whatever, and go sell it for money. But she really benefited off of rich, sick people. The patient's diets were very small portions of like tomato soup or orange juice or um, vegetable mash or which is gross and sometimes just as little as half a grape and um, would only give them a little bit just at certain times pretty much starve them to death. One of Linda's patients had kept a diary of everything that he was allowed to eat under Linda's strict diet plan. The man's name was Earl Edward Erdman. He entered Hazard's care on February 1st and was unfortunately dead by March 28th. By the 16th of February, Mr. Erdman was already having physical downsides to the fasting. Here's an excerpt from that day. February 16th, one cup hot strained tomato soup, AM and PM. Slept better than last night. Head quite dizzy. Eyes yellow, streaked, and red. Mr. Erdman's diet would continue on that way until March 28th, when he was taken to the hospital and passed that afternoon. Uh, so Linda would take the bodies, allegedly, and take them to her clawfoot bathtub and do an autopsy because she wanted to see their starved body and what the organs would look like starved which is kind of interesting because you have to know that for science. So it's 
it's gross, but I mean, now we know. Um, <laughs> it was also rumored that she buried bodies under her driveway but it was also rumored, and it's still up for debate, that she took them down the road to a graveyard that's unmarked and um, abandoned now. Um, but I don't think that that's true. It seems a little bit too far by foot to be carrying bodies down there. Um, and it also is, it was a functioning graveyard at one point. Um, so it's not like she could just take bodies down there and like add stones and nobody would notice it. It was a recorded cemetery, just not, um, it's just not anymore. We checked out the graveyard ourselves to see if it was something that we thought was reasonable for Linda Hazard to have taken the bodies to. Uh, as you may notice, there's these orange holes coming from the ground. And those are the unmarked graves. Unmarked graves. Some are marked, some are not. You can see them in rows. Oh, yeah. What do you do today, Nikki? I oh, just hiked in the middle of the woods to go to an abandoned cemetery. a good minute away like that would have been a long hike and it rains here a lot like I don't think so I mean I know back in the old days they would have to do a lot more to get places but I just have a feeling that the theory of them but Samuel was probably in on everything too her husband so like there's a good chance he probably helped her yeah. this one's cool because there's like two trees just like poking out Am I on someone? No, that's horrible. This is crazy. I usually lay out okay, but it's because of the, the season change colors. They're kind of hard to see. Oh, oranges. gotcha. Yeah, because even that one in between the I orange know, leaves. I couldn't see that one until just now. Yeah. This tree fell in between? Yeah. And this is the place that a friend claimed that he was, um, like, cursed or what's that called? Like, possessed? Possessed. Yeah, he had scrapes on his back and it was really weird. Like, super weird. So, growing up in the area was a lot of fun. It was really quiet, but really pretty, really peaceful. You could go to the cemetery at night and it was a fun time to show everybody and get spooky. Um, one time we were there and one of our friends, it was a group of us, I think some people hadn't been there but most of us had, and one of the kids that was there claimed that he was possessed. So basically what happened was is he had been over by a tree and somebody noticed him. So I don't know if he was like leaning against a tree and scraped his back or what happened, but somebody noticed him by a tree and he was acting really weird and we ended up leaving because somebody got spooked. And that night two of his friends took him home because he was scared and felt funny and had three scrapes on his back. I don't know. But they took him home and claimed he was acting really weird all night and then took him home and nothing ever happened. But he was also very dramatic, so who knows? After visiting the graveyard, we got back in the car and drove up the hill to see where Starvation Heights would have been. We don't have to turn down. That's not even right. <laughs> If you look deep in the trees, you can see the remnants of the old sanitarium house. Although mostly you can just see the new house. We also tried to get a good view of where the rumors say that she would have buried the bodies on the property. The reason that you can't really go there or, I mean... 
if you can, I don't know how to reach out to the person that lives there, but it's been like five or six years ago now, but me and my mom are really interested in it, in Starvation Heights, and we wanted to go see what it was all about. I mean, I guess I didn't do enough research to know that it somebody's house was still on the property and all that good stuff, but we went and pulled down the driveway and there are two like really big houses below, but we had no reason to be there. And the owner of the property pulled in right behind us and he definitely knew why we were there. But my mom being really smart and witty and fast, she was like, yeah, there's supposed to be a house for rent down here. And he's like, oh really, what were the crossroads? And out of nowhere, there is a road near there named Fregaria and so out of nowhere I spit out Fregaria and he points you know north and says oh that's right up there and we totally threw him off but had we just been like hey we heard that that's Starvation Heights this is you know we're really interested it could have gone one or two ways he could have been really angry or he could have said come on in come check it out so who knows but if he's watching, sorry. <laughs> Hazard's most well-known patients, however, were Claire and Dorothea Williamson. The orphan daughters of a well-to-do English military officer would hear of Linda's alternative medicine while on holiday in Victoria, British Columbia. The two sisters both had various medical issues that they were looking to treat at the sanitarium. The two would be made to wait in a hotel while Linda prepped the facility for them, but nevertheless got them started on their quote-unquote beautiful treatment, as Linda would call it. By the time the girls would even arrive to Starvation Heights, they were roughly 70 pounds. It would eventually be the death of Claire Williamson that would finally spark an investigation of Linda and Samuel Hazard. After receiving an odd letter from Dorothea, their childhood nurse would come for a visit to find Miss Hazard not only wearing Claire's clothing, but found out that the Hazards had made Claire sign her finances over to them. Later in the investigations, it was discovered that she had many of her wealthy patients sign their finances over to her before starving them to death and collecting their money. Linda was arrested on August 15th and her trial would start in January and end with her being found guilty and sentenced to hard labor. Unfortunately, she only served two years before being pardoned by the Washington governor of the time. Hazard would move to New Zealand and return to Alala in 1920 and would die 15 years later. What did she die of? Starvation. In a tiny town with a not-so-tiny history, it really makes you wonder what could be going on in your neighborhood right under your nose. Thank you for watching today's episode of Weird Washington. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment if there's anywhere in Washington that you want to hear about. Thank you again for watching today's episode and have a good day, have a good night, have a good life. Okay, bye! There's a jellyfish! Look at him! <laughs> I got a seal on my last video. Look well, it's not in my video, but I got it while I was. That's so cool. Look at a jelly! Look at him! He's just hanging out! Looking for a snack! He's so peaceful. Aren't you cold?